Good day everybody and welcome to the Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest Math Lessons. In today's lesson, we are going to be discussing word problems for grades 1 and 2. So, what are word problems in mathematics? A word problem is a series of sentences describing a scenario. Normally it is related to a real life situation and it will require us to solve the problem using our mathematical skills that we have learned. And in order to solve a word problem, we should first read the question carefully and attempt to understand what the question is asking for us to do. And we can benefit us by underlining, highlighting, or making notes on the clues that are given within the question. Then we may ask ourselves, what is the question asking for? How do we solve the answer, which we can go through either writing, drawing, or calculating the problem? And we can do this in a step-by-step -step until we reach our final answer. Then we can examine the choices and carefully choose the correct answer. And a common mistake that students normally do is that they will rush into a question and just pick a choice that appears right to them. That's something we're going to want to avoid. So a good habit will be to examine the question carefully and then work out our solution independently. So let's look at some questions here. Let's jump into our first question. An adult ticket to the zoo costs four euros. The ticket for a child is one euro cheaper. How many euros must a father pay to enter the zoo with his two children? Five, six, seven, ten, or twelve? And this will be a good time to pause the video and try to work out the answer for yourself. Have you gotten the answer? Well, let's check out. So. First, we should ask ourselves what the question is asking us to solve here. In this case, we need to find out the total amount of money the father will, with two children needs to pay to enter the zoo. So the question says that adult ticket costs four euros. As for the price of a child's ticket, the question states that it is one euro less than an adult ticket. So since the price of an adult ticket is four euros, we can simply take, go four, take away one, and get three. Therefore, the cost of a child's ticket will be three euros. Now, since the father has two children, we will have to go three plus three because there are two children and we will have to add three two times and we get six. Therefore, having the two children will cost us six euros. And then, because we still have to account for the father as well, and we know that if an adult ticket is four euros, we can simply add four and six to get 10 and therefore, we know that a father must pay to enter the zoo with his two children will cost him 10 euros. Therefore, we can conclude that D will be our final answer. All right, so for question two, we have Teresa who has 37 CDs and her friend Claudia said, if you give me 10 of your CDs, we will both have the same number of CDs. And how many CDs does Claudia have? And again, pause the video and try to work out the answer for yourself. All right, I hope you have the answer. Let's check it out. So for the first part, what is the question asking us? The question is how many CDs does Claudia have? So the question says if Claudia has 10, gets sent 10 CDs from Teresa, they will both have the same number of CDs. So we can simply go 37 minus 10 because Teresa initially has 37 and if she gives 10 away, she'll have 27 CDs. Therefore, we know that both Teresa and Claudia will now have 27 CDs each. But to be careful, we don't want to jump and say, oh, these are our answer, because we know that this is happening after Teresa gives 10 of her CDs away to Claudia. So if we want to get the true number of CDs that Claudia owns, we have to subtract another 10 from the 27, which is 17. And this means that Claudia, but before any trading goes on, will have 17 CDs. Therefore, we know that our answer will be B, 17. So for our third question, it states that Miss Smith bought a basket with 16 clementines, Carol ate half of them, Eva ate two clementines, and Dana ate the rest. How many clementines did Dana eat? And again, pause the video and try to work out the answer for yourself. All right, hopefully you have the answer. Let's go through it. So 
To figure out how many clementines Dana ate, we first start with 16 clementines and then we're going to divide these 16 clementines into two equal groups. This means that we have eight clementines in each group, as we can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then eight over here as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So since Carol ate half of the 16, this means Carol ate eight of the clementines, as we can see here. And so we can ignore these eight clementines as we know that they are gone. Now, there are the other half of the clementines that we have, which are the remaining eight. And since we know that Ava ate two of them, we can easily get rid of, subtract two from the eight here, which will give us the remaining six. So as the question says that Dana ate the rest of them, this means that Dana must have ate the remaining six clementines. Therefore, our answer will be B, B, six. All right, so for question four, it states that we have three squirrels, Annie, Asia, and Ellie, that collected seven nuts. They all collected a different number of nuts, but each of them found at least one. Annie collected the least, Asia the most of all. How many nuts did Ellie find? And pause the video and try to work out the answer. All right, I hope you found the answer. Let's check it out. So... With this question, there are quite a few clues that have, that have been given to us, and it can be beneficial to us to lay them out to help us analyze the problem. So, the first thing we know is that the total number of nuts was, that was collected is 7. Second, we know that all the squirrels collected a different number of nuts. Third, we know that each of them found at least one nut. Fourth, we know that Annie collected the least number of nuts. And finally, Asia collected the most number of nuts. So, having listed these clues out, we can look at the first three clues and realize that we just want to represent 7 as a sum of three different whole numbers, and those numbers shall not be 0, as since clue number 3 tells us that each of them found at least one nut. Now, there are many combinations of numbers to get the sum of 7. For example, we have 1 plus 1 plus 5, or... 2 plus 2 plus 3, we can also have 1 plus 2 plus 4. However, the first two combinations don't work, as they have same numbers and conflict with clue number 2 here, as we know that all squirrels collected a different number of nuts. So, we can rule these out. Therefore, the only one with three different whole numbers that can make up a sum of 7 is 1 plus 2 plus 4. And, from clue number 4 and clue number 5, since Annie collected the least number of nuts, she must have been the squirrel that collected the one nut. And since Asia collected the most nuts, she must have been the squirrel that collected the four nuts. This means that Ellie has the only number left, which is two nuts. Therefore, our answer will be B, B, two. So for question five, a restaurant offers a lunch special deal that costs $15 and includes a soup, a main course, and a dessert. If ordered separately, the soup costs $4, the main course costs $9, and the dessert costs $5. How much will Michael save if he orders the lunch special instead of the three separate meals? And you can pause the video and try to work out the answer for yourself. Alright, have you gotten the answer? Let's check it out. So, first of all, we will, it will be help us if we can figure out how much it costs on total if the meals are all ordered separately. So, we know the price of each of the individual soups, main course, and the desserts by themselves. So, if we simply add these together, we can figure out that $4 plus $9 plus $5 will give us $18. Now, we know that the uh, special costs $15, and we want to know how much money Michael will save if he orders the lunch special rather than ordering them separately. So we can take our $18 and subtract it by $15, giving us $3. Therefore, Michael will be saving $3, and our answer will be A, 3. All right, on to question six. Eve, the centipede, has 100 feet. Yesterday, she bought it and put on 16 pairs of new shoes. In spite of that though, 14 of her feet were still bare. On how many feet did she have shoes before she bought the new shoes? And again, 
pause the video and try to work it out the answer. All right, let's check to see if we got the answer right. So to solve this problem, let us work backwards. First, we know that Eve has 100 feet. So since she still has 14 bare feet, even after she put on some new shoes, we can go 100 minus 14, which is 86. This means that Eve has 86 feet with shoes on, including the 16 pairs of new shoes that Eve bought yesterday. And since one pair of shoes is for two feet, and two pairs of shoes are for four feet, we can then go 16 pairs of shoes must be 16 plus 16, giving us 32 feet. This means that Eve would have just put on 32 of her feet with some new shoes. Now, since we know that the total number of feet with shoes on, 86, and the number of new shoes, 32, Eve just put on, finding the difference between these two will give us the number of feet with shoes on before Eve got the new ones. So, to find this difference, we can take 86, subtract it by 32, and this will give us 54. Therefore, Eve had 54 feet with shoes on before she bought the new shoes. So, our answer will be C, 54. All right, on to the seventh question. Matthew and Clara live in the same high-rise apartment building. Clara's apartment is 12 floors above Matthew's. One day, Matthew took to the stairs to go to Clara's apartment. On the eighth floor, he figured out that he was exactly halfway between his floor and her floor. On which floor is Clara's apartment on? So try to pause the video and see if you can work out the problem for yourself. All right, hopefully you have the answer. Let's check it out. So to solve this problem, it's better if we draw a picture to help us visualize this information as this can be very hard to try to jumble this all in our mind. So we know that Clara is above Matthew, the distance we aren't exactly sure of at the moment, but we know that Clara is above Matthew. And we do know that their apartments are 12 floors apart from one another. Now, we also have the better information that when Matthew reached the eighth floor, we knew that he was halfway between his floor and Clara's. This means that the other half is the height from the eighth floor to Clara's floor which is six floors. So since half of 12 is six, we simply can go, because we know from this eight floor that he had six more floors to climb, we can simply go eight plus six, giving us 14. Therefore, we know that Clara is at the 14th floor on the apartment block. And because B has 14 as its answer, we know that B must be the correct answer. And this will conclude our lesson for the day. Thank you for your attention during our lesson. If you are in need of extra information, you can check out the Math Kangaroo website, mathkangaroo.ca, or you can send an email to info at mathkangaroocanada.com with your questions. Thank you again for your time, and have a good day.